I purchased this Danish Krag Jorgensen model 1889 recently online. It was listed as deactivated, with its barrel plugged. The price was low enough that I jumped on it. Since it appears to be in good condition otherwise, at the very least, it would be a good source of parts. Or best case scenario, it could be brought back to shooting condition. In this video, that's what I'm doing. Of course, the first thing I did when I received this rifle was to take it apart and see how it was deactivated. The word deactivated just means that it can't fire. Deactivation can vary from a simple plugged barrel to more invasive methods such as destroying the receiver or barrel in a way that would prevent it from ever functioning again. This, of course, has a plugged barrel. It's filled to within about 10 inches of the muzzle. At the other end, the plug continues into the chamber. I'm able to scratch it easily, which tells me that it's lead. If all goes well, maybe it could be simply melted out. I'll look at all the other pressure bearing parts to see if they've been modified in any way. The receiver looks good and in real nice condition. Usually these have much less bluing. The bolt looks solid as well, and it's functional. The tip of the firing pin is intact, something that's usually cut on a deactivated rifle. The real secret lies underneath the barrel jacket. It unscrews easily. And looking at this, the barrel was cut, what looks to be about 11 inches back from the muzzle, or an inch past where the plug starts. Then it was joined back together, perhaps by the plug itself, but it is misaligned slightly. If you've ever seen something like this before, let me know down in the comments. My theory as to why it's cut is that this is a World War II bring back. The stock was duffel cut, and due to the extra long barrel in the Danish crag, it had to be cut as well. So unfortunately, this barrel is toast. However, over the past few years, as a part of my general love for crags, I've bought uncommon parts as they become available. That includes not one, but two receivers, and a complete barrel assembly, including the jacket, sights, and an intact barrel. My plan is to replace the barrel on the rifle with this one, but if it doesn't index properly, I can try some combination of the receivers. To get started, I'll take all the extra parts off of the receiver. To hold the barrel and the receiver, I made these blocks from oak. This pair goes around the barrel at the chamber. They're a bit oversized, but that's solved by a few wraps of drywall tape. This block is cut to fit the receiver, with the lug fitting in here, like so. The front just barely sticks out so as to not interfere with the barrel clamp. To hold the barrel block securely, I made this from scrap and stuff I had laying around the workshop. It fits on my bench like so, and I'll clamp it down. The shackles running every which way are so the forces being applied don't cause the wood to split. I'll start by clamping the barrel. But first I need to make sure to slide on the receiver block. Then I can add the barrel blocks. And the tape, making sure it's tightly wrapped around the barrel shank. And then I'll really crank down on the bolts. The 
This is what I rigged up to hold the receiver block. Again from scrap I had laying around. I can use one of the extended ends to get a wrench on it for more leverage. While not an ideal setup, I'll see if I can get it to break free with this pipe wrench. And that's not working at all. The barrel is turning in the blocks. I'll loosen the bolts to reset and try again. Same thing, it's spinning some more. The blocks don't have a good enough grip on the barrel. I'll reset once more, but this time I used a fresh piece of drywall tape and sprinkled some gym chalk around the barrel. That's it. From there, the receiver threads off easily. The receiver looks good, just like the other two. In preparation for the new barrel, I'll clean any old oil off of the threads of the receiver. Then I can set up the new barrel in the blocks. I'll make sure I can see the alignment mark and that it's facing to the right. I'll add a small amount of anti-seize to the threads, spreading it around evenly so there's a thin coating. I'll first test fit the receiver to see how far off the alignment mark is. It needs to be about 180 degrees from here. I can see there's room for it to thread on more. Hopefully I just need more leverage for that last half turn. I'll set the receiver in the block. I want the front sticking out slightly, just enough so I'm able to see the alignment mark. Now to thread it on. This is about how far I got before. The clamp allows me to screw it on further. And this is how far I can go by hand. With a wrench, I'll slowly approach aligning the marks. Now that I'm close, I'll check progress after every few degrees. And that's it. Getting down at their level, 
I can see that the marks are well aligned. Now I can disassemble this setup. Here's a better shot of the alignment marks. I'll clean the chalk off. Next, I'll test fit the bolt. This number at the base of the bolt handle I think refers to the headspace. More on that in a bit, but first I'll check to see if the bolt body fits and will close all the way. It fits well and closes easily. There doesn't seem to be any play back and forth. Now I'll check with the bolt internals added. It should fit the same way, but this will show if the extractor groove is off, even though it doesn't look like it is. It fits well, same as before. I don't have any headspace gauges. The 8x58R Danish is a rimmed case, so it's not critical. However, as a rudimentary check, these are four pieces of brass fired from another Danish crag. The two on the right with the marks near the base have not been sized. The other two have. I'll check those first. The bolt is able to fully close, with just slightly more resistance than without a casing. I'll double check. And this one feels the same. Next, I'll chamber the unsized cases. The bolt won't close fully. You can see the handle has another 10 or 15 degrees to go. The second round is about the same. These tests only show that the chamber depth isn't excessive, swallowing brass that's been sized to another rifle. Headspace on a rimmed cartridge is measured by the thickness of the rim. Here I took the sized brass and added tape to their bases, one and two layers, each of which are about 5 thousandths thick. First, the one layer. The bolt is just a few degrees from closing all the way. If I had better leverage, I'd be able to fully close it. Next, the two layers. The bolt handle doesn't want to close anymore. It's the same amount from closing as it was with the unsized brass. Since it's not closing all the way, this tells me that the headspace is inexcessive. Like I said, headspace is less critical on rimmed rounds. Since the sized brass fits and the bolt feel is nearly identical to my other Danish crags, I'm confident that it's safe. Now to reassemble the rifle.
Here's the completed, reactivated rifle. There's only one tell, the small portion of the barrel between the receiver and the barrel jacket that's exposed. The finish doesn't match. And on the other side, the serial numbers don't match, while they do on the rest of the rifle. There is one more thing to do, and that, of course, is to shoot this rifle. I'll start off by loading one round. These are reloads, of course, though they're not downloaded. I'm using the same charge that I shoot in my other Danish cracks. That felt right, and there's no catastrophic failure. The brass looks normal, no signs of excess pressure or headspace. Now I can load a full magazine. I'm only shooting at 50 yards. I mostly want to test how well everything is functioning. Next time, I'll get a proper rest and shoot for groups at 100 yards. In addition, I also loaded a few rounds with cast bullets. I'm testing how they shoot, in addition to how well they feed, which seems to be working well. Now, to see how well they grouped. Looks like I need to adjust the windage. I aimed at the bottom of the target when shooting the jacketed rounds. That probably wasn't necessary since they impacted only a few inches high. The cast, I aimed dead center, and they're a bit low. I still need to develop a proper cast load, but this isn't a bad start. That's all for this video. I'm happy with how I was able to bring this rifle back to life. Deactivated, no more. Thanks for watching.